These guys came in middle of the night, probably because I had a permit pulled, right? They're looking for copper. They see metal out there. They steal all the weights. They steal everything. They tried taking the squat rack through the service door. Like, there was no garage door. They could just <laughs> walk right out. These guys are trying to get through the service door. Couldn't do it and panicked and left. Welcome to another episode of Real Tea Chicago, the podcast for real estate professionals, investors, and enthusiasts to step out of their own life and enjoy the trials and tribulations of someone else's shit. That's right. I'm Let's Jamie. Go. And I'm Terrence. And we are here to share with you the most interesting, captivating, and unhinged stories we can find in Chicago real estate. And today, I'm so excited for our guests, Mark Ainley and Tom Shellcross of the Straight Up Chicago Investor podcast. So some of you might already be familiar with them. Terrence, you've met one of them. Yes, I've listened to your podcast at least for the last year or so, so I'm Thank fangirling awesome. over here. Um, but if you wouldn't mind, give us an elevator pitch, if you will, a little bit about yourselves, your background, just kind of for the listeners who might not know you. You go. Been in real estate for 20 years. It, got, it was really kind of my second job. Uh, I'm happy. I've, it's one of those things I'm very happy. I, I found my way into real estate and very young. Um, been investing my, my first property when I was 21. Um, you know, we did a lot when the market crashed and I am more of the type of person that just jumps in and figures it out. And that causes a lot of mistakes <laughs> and a lot of lessons, but you know, I, I, I've, I like the whole mentality around fail fast. So I, I've done that a lot in my life. And, uh, as I was thinking about things we might talk about today, I, I, I came up with a lot of messed up things that I've done or has happened to me because of it. <laughs> Successful fails, of course. Yeah, yeah, they're all. If you learn something, it's always successful fail. There we go. Yeah, the two truths and the lie is pretty easy. There's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of things to come up with. Uh, Tom Shellcross, been investing probably for the past seven or eight years, mostly on the north and northwest side of Chicago. Um, I actually met Mark. I started on the south side, and he managed all my properties. And from there, we became friends and started the podcast. And yeah, been fun. Father of four, so that keeps me busy. And that's me. How old? They are 12, 9, 6, and 4. Wow. You are a busy fellow. Yeah. Okay. A lot of soccer practice. You, I used to have hair, man. I was killing it. Ooh. Now I got to wear a hat everywhere. See, I, I used to have hair too. It wasn't children. <laughs> it was just, you know, it just, it just left me. I don't know what to do with my hands, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm used to holding the mic and this is weird for me. Should I give you, you want to hold that ball? I do need something to fidget with. <laughs> do it. No, I'm fine. I'll just. You got to sit on him. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> Well, should we just jump right in? Oh, absolutely. I am really excited to hear about these stories. Two truths and a lie. Or as Terrence said earlier, four truths and two four lies. Four truths and two lies. Oh, I wasn't ready for the second lie. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Go ahead. You go first. Who would like to go first? I go first. Tom, do sure. it. Reverse alphabetical order. All right. So two truths and a lie. In no particular order. I'm going to go in that order. Or am I? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm ready. All right. So... My brother's current fiance, they met because she used to be a tenant of mine. Okay. Okay. I have a very expensive piano in my front room that I don't think my wife likes. Uh, that was, I, I got it from a house I was flipping. So that was just going to get tossed. Okay. Um, and then I have flipped a house that was the, the owner who sold it to me was one of my high school teachers. Oh. Okay. Jamie Book, would you like to guess first? Sometimes I like to suss out the lie by the amount of details given, but you give details to all of them. He's played this game before. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, the hard part is, right, they're all believable. I totally believe you have a piano because I have really random things from flips. Um, He's a pianist. And, okay, the other one was your... Brother's girlfriend's brother's fiancé, tenant was a tenant and then the third one remind me teacher. I fl yeah flipped a house that you got from your teacher i think that one's true also so what were the two so two and three i think are truths piano and teacher yes i'm gonna go with teacher fiance or true piano not so much all right what's do i reveal now or does he go 
We Let's see. hear Mark's first, right. and then we'll. Uh... Are these related to real estate specifically? Because I drew it like my whole life of crazy. <laughs> yeah, shit. The, no. It's re- did you not listen to the episode? It's real I estate did, related. I, did. I know, but they they go off a little. Yeah, it's you just know, interesting. Other people's bullshit. All right, I walked in on a dead guy in a vacant house. Ooh. I've taken stray animals home that I found. I set up barbed wire to keep people out from breaking into a property. Or I watched the UPS I, UPS guy get shot. Okay, that was three wait, truths wait. and a lie. Yeah, how, how many Those lies three are there? It's three truths and a lie. And one lie. Three oh, truths okay. and a lie. Okay, you have thrown a monkey wrench in this whole thing. What was the last one again? I watched the UPS guy get shot in the <gasps> butt. Okay. All right. I'm not going to lie. These are... We might... You, you need to repeat those. These are really cool. I remembered them. Okay. These were off the top of my head. I got a whole bunch of... Like, if I oh, sat here, I was, I was sitting out in the parking lot thinking, oh, no, I didn't do my homework. So I'm like, what's the top of my head stuff? Okay. Okay, you get, you definitely got Sam again. I forgot the first two. I walked in on a dead guy in a vacant house. Dead guy. I've taken stray animals home that I found. Animals. I set up barbed wire to keep people out of a, a vacant house. Barbed wire. I watched a UPS egg, UPS guy get shot in the butt. Brown got shot. You're allergic to cats, so I'm going that's a lie. Okay. <laughs> nice. He didn't say he brought cats home, I though. know, but... I am going to go with... Damn. Okay, the lie is... Barbed wire. Just because I really want the other three to be true. That's kind of how I do these things. All right. All right. Who's going to go first? So we could do this. We could do it one of two ways. You could just tell us which one's the lie, or you can just start telling a story and reveal the truth at some point. Oh, man. I'm just going to tell the. So the. My. I forgot what I told you guys. My. (laughs) See, this is the problem with lying. Yeah, that's, caught it. <laughs> that's what our parents told us. Oh, my life. My my brother did not meet his fiance because she was a tenant. Do you even have a brother? I have two brothers. Okay. Do either of them even have fiancés? Uh, yeah, one's got a wife, one's got a fiance. Okay, but and not, I do none have of tenants, them tenants, but the, okay. the Venn diagram did not. <laughs> it didn't overlap. No, no Venn diagram. Oh, uh, okay. Where Everything else bro- is good. Where'd your brother meet his fiance? Uh, the one who has his fiance out, they both live out in Denver. They met in Denver. She's from Libertyville. Okay. <laughs> There was the connection right there. Hi, nice to meet you. Where are you from? Libertyville? Let's get married. Yep. Cool. Very much. Okay. Nice and easy. Simple man. I've forgotten the other two already. Uh, Memory teacher? of a goldfish. Teacher flip. Teacher flip. Didn't, and I didn't know about that one until after the fact. So northwest side of Chicago is pretty tight knit. Um, I didn't put two and two together with the name. He had passed away already. It was his wife. Oh. I didn't put two and two together. And then the daughter showed up to, after it was, you know, we flipped it's on the market. She's like, oh, this used to be my parents' house, blah, blah, blah. He taught her at the high school for 30 years. I was like, and then it clicked like with the last name, like, oh, like that's Mr. Mahoney. Like that's insane. Oh, I love small so, world stories like that. That's awesome. What high school? You said Northwest side? St. Pat's. Okay. Austin and Belmont. Is that the all boys version of oh, Resurrection? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. I had um, friends that went to Resurrection. So I'm like, I know there was a boys equivalent. I forget what school it was. Yep. Um, and then the last one, the piano was from actually one we just finished up in uh, Roscoe Village. The very... Nice stand-up Conover piano from over... It's 100 years old, and it's it's worth, like, a decent amount of money. It's worth, like, a car. Jeez. And she was like, my daughter plays. I kind of play. My daughter actually really plays. And I was like, hey, like, what are you doing with this to the seller? She's like, oh, like, we're just going to toss it. I was, like, this, <gasps> I was like, hey, like, this thing's worth a lot of money. Like, I'll buy it from you, but, like... You know, yeah. And then she's like, no, I'm going to toss it. And, like, I, we went through, like, three or four times. I was like, this is what it's worth. Like, like I, I want to give you money for it. Yeah. We agreed I would pay her moving fees, which is nowhere near. No. But, like, that, that was the agreement we came to. And it was like. Wow. The thing's awesome. Did you have to do any refurbishing, refinishing? Refurbished, retuned it, get it moved, but still, like, well worth it. That's awesome. And you said that's a flip you just did? or So I bought it about a, or I got it from her about a year ago. Okay. And then we're just finishing the flip right now. Like, we're. So what kind of, circle. what kind of property was it? This was, it's a single family on the 1700 block of Roscoe. So if you can picture that where like the old Dinkles used to be yep. over in that area, um, it dead ends into Ravenswood. It's a little boulevard street. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Right there. Nice. So yeah. Amazing. Let's hear about you. Let's hear about your dead guys. I know. <laughs> I didn't do any South side stories there. That's probably a miss on me. I yeah. Yeah. I, well, <laughs> we got time. Yeah. We have plenty of time, but a lot I'm, of my stuff, I guess, traces to the South side. I'm so, kind of hoping someone got shot and someone's dead. I know that's terrible, <gasps> oh, but go ahead. Darren. I'm sorry to disappoint you. No one, we thought he was dead. 
the paramedics called him. He was just so messed up. Like he just was so like, he was turning different colors. We thought for sure he was dead. Oh. But he was alive. So that, okay. that's my lie, I guess, technically. But Brown got shot. Wait, that's the lie. That's, that's the lie. lie. That's the lie. So it's true, but it's. But the messed up part is I continue to show the property. To, With him uh, there. Yeah, I continue to look at the property as like, like should I buy this place? Like, <laughs> Well, you figure there was no threat. He's dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. But uh, yeah, no, he was just uh, comatose. And, and they, they. So hold on. Okay. I don't know what happened to him. But. So let me get this straight. So you walked into this place. Yes, it was 110th and uh, Wentworth. Okay. In the, Were you alone? Did you have lockbox keys? Were you with someone? I was with myself and uh, another real estate investor. Okay. So you walk in, open the door, body. Yes. Keep going. Do you tour the property first? Well, this is my first thought. Okay. I've been preparing myself for this. <laughs> like, this is like... You were ready for I've it. I've always, like, thought... I still, like, like, I can't believe I haven't seen... Like, every time you go in a basement, you're always expecting to, like, find something yes, crazy. that's true. Someone. Remember, whenever I'm in a creepy basement, I always think, like, someone probably died down here. Like, it's 125 years yeah. old. There's a good chance. But, uh, walked in, I'm like, holy cow. Like, and, like, it kind of had one of those... I don't know. This probably sounds bad saying it's out loud, where you, like, you kind of, like, nudge it. Like, like is it hey, buddy. Hey, <laughs> is this your first dead body encounter? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm trying to think how I would, if I would stay composed. But I was if already I thinking, in. like doing all this stuff on the south side, and you hear all this crazy yeah, stuff. Yeah. I'm like, this, you're bound to see like all these vacant houses we're going through, and totally. You know, there's a lot of drug abuse. There's a lot of a lot of things that happen. Um, so I, I was I was always kind of prepared for that moment in, in a weird, twisted way, but. Called the 911, and then I kept looking at the place, and then they got there, and then I, I just, like, darted after that. So, But they, they woke him up, and I'm like, oh, cow. So, hmm. so yeah, so he, he lived. Sorry, disappointment. <laughs> I am, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy that he's alive. Uh, he might not be now. like 10 years ago. Yeah, right? He may not be alive We're going to play the odds based on the life that guy was living. So, like, just out sure. of curiosity, is there, like, a line of questioning that you have to answer? Or is it just, did it just, hey, all right, thanks for calling us. Have a nice day? It was that simple. They're like, oh, it's the sales. Like, Chicago, you want me to grab a question? Nah, man, you better get out of here. This neighborhood ain't safe. I think that's wow. what the paramedic said to me. <laughs> okay. I would just, I mean, good to know. I'd figure if I see a dead body, I'd probably have to answer a question. Yeah, or two. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You'd I think. didn't do it. If it was in the suburbs, I might have been in handcuffs. That's I mean, true. Who knows? <laughs> oh, for sure. Wow. So, okay. But uh, note to self. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. And then the other barbed wire, same thing, south side. And the, the ironic part of this. So, we kept having a guy break into this property in, in uh, South Chicago. And what I did was we took, we went, you could buy like the sheets of barbed wire and we just put it like all around the house, like all around the front porch, all around. So it's like, you're going to have to go through hell. To so get you didn't inside. even put fences. You just put No, I just put wire. it all over the ground. Like, so if you hop the fence, he would land right on barbed wire. Oh. Now the horrible part of this, and this is maybe the irony of it is I went home that day. I was so cut up. Nice. Oh yeah. <laughs> See? I got hurt. Then the next day, my guy got there early. I didn't tell him. He cut himself no. up. Like, so, so everyone got hurt, but the bad but guy. But the guy didn't break in. But he didn't break in. So it I took it success. as a win. He yeah. might have gotten hurt, and you just don't know. I don't know. Did I you still see have any, some like, marks on my hands. Hand and body residue on there anytime overnight? There was from... blood, but I know it was my it guy's probably, blood. Okay. Though, so. <laughs> so barbed wire works. That was the last job he did on the south side. Then uh, the other story, mm -hmm. UPS guy. 64th and Hermitage. This was like the first three properties bought. So the first three properties I ever bought on the South Side were at an auction. Went to an auction on a Sunday, bought a condo in Washington Park, a two flat in her in uh, Englewood, and a single family in Englewood for like seventy thousand dollars. Like all all three properties. Oh, nice. And uh, the two flat in Hermitage, we ended up you know rehabbing it, but it was it was it was a hot summer three o'clock in the afternoon. Probably should have been out of the neighborhood already. And uh, UPS guy rolls up. He's already nervous about delivering in the neighborhood and then gunshots rang out and that guy got shot and as i'm ducking i hear ah, he starts swearing shot me in my ass like, <laughs> that's not funny and i'm like i'm so scared but this is so funny like because he's like like going down this I, he was probably about uh 20 yards away but like his panic and his tone could have carried for two miles i mean he oh, got he shot, shot me in the ass motherfucker shot me in the ass <laughs> like, and he's like i'm just like oh my god this is so scary and like Hilarious at the same time. The guy lived. I he know he lived. Okay. He was fine. So no, no dead body. Yeah, he, he was. Uh, I don't know if this played any. He was a bigger guy and he had a, a bigger rump. But I don't know if he was able to absorb it. But uh, yeah, that was uh, bigger rump. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. Maybe more cushion, right? Um, yeah, more cushion for the pushing. But yeah, that, that's. Uh, Wonder kind of workers count they have. <laughs> it's union, so they're good. Oh, yeah, he's, he's fine. He's, he's set. He probably yeah. never had he to probably work another day condo. in his Leave life. It, right, exactly. But the problem is he probably couldn't sit on his ass doing nothing. Oh, that's true. Yes. 
Dude. When was this? I feel like I want to Google it and look up the You can find it. It's in there. It's, it was 2009. So I, I think it would have been like July 2009. I mean, I'm sure if I just Google UPS guy got shot in the ass, there's... In Englewood, yeah. Not I that big. Yeah, in yeah. Englewood. That's true. Jeez. For Google search, you probably ever reword that, but... Uh, yeah. You'd be surprised. In the booty. Buttocks. In the glutes. Yeah. Dude. All right, so UPS guy did get shot in his ass. Dead guy didn't die. Cats. Animals. Oh, yeah. I've taken multiple dogs home but they never really they stop home and then it's like you can't leave those here and then i go find a shelter or something like that but okay so like you find them in the abandoned properties yeah they'll be in the abandoned properties or like on the streets there's a lot yeah i love dogs man it's so sad i've I found dead dogs before and that, that's that's even more sad and in the, properties yeah and dogs always when they're gonna pass away you guys might know this but like they go find somewhere and like like hide yeah hide. cats do that too and know? you always find them like in the closet like it, it's just really sad so i always try to i always think about those moments it's like i can't let them end up in somebody's closet in an abandoned building in the neighborhood yeah. so but lance the other day lance was going to do a move out and uh a cat came up to him and he took it home he woke up the next day yeah, three babies. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> okay so mm -mm. you don't bring strays home mm -mm. take them straight to the shelter here you go would you even do that Take it to the shelter? Yeah. Yes. I feel like you would just see it and you'd be like, hey, animal. No. Well, like, first, it depends on the situation. It. If I had like a box and gloves. Yeah, you wouldn't touch it. No, I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> but if I had a box, I'd put in a box and I'd call. I'd I'd probably call 911. Like, guys, I don't know who to call, but I I have a cat. 311. Um, but they don't come fast enough. So I call 911 and I'd say, hey, guys, I have a cat. What do I do? And they'd say. Call 311. And then I would call 311. I just figured the first call should be to an emergency person. No, don't waste your resources. I pay taxes. I pay a lot of taxes. All right, you want to see my property tax bill this year? It's fucking expensive. Last summer, uh, another quick story here, talk about pets. A property manager friend of mine in Chicago calls up. He's like, I just had a tenant get evicted this morning. Sheriff came um, and they weren't home, locked up the place. There's some stuff inside, but there's like seven French bulldogs. Seven? <laughs> I'm like, my first thought was like, I'll buy them for you 500 bucks. Like, I'm yeah. thinking about flipping them. <laughs> flipping bulldogs? Flip, flip flipping that, bulldogs. Dude, flip that's that a great bulldog. LLC name. But, flipping uh, bulldogs. Flipping bulldogs. Once an investor, always an investor. But then when I'm like, I like this guy. He's a friend of mine. I'm like, dude, you realize you could make up all that back, right? Like, I, I was excited for him. Like, this is great. He's like, okay, really? I got him excited. He's like, I'm going to go back. I'm like, you got to feed him. Like, you got to get over there. You got to take care of him. Like, and he went back later on. The door was kicked down, and they came back. Oh, jeez. So I'm like, oh, man. That was At least they came back they, they knew for the dogs. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they were thinking were. the same thing I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, 100. no, you don't, French Bulldogs are expensive. Yes, like five, seven grand. Like, I'm like, I was doing the math. I'm like, dude, we, we can make something. I'll help you, man. <laughs> if, no, the, if I came back, those dogs were gone. That guy probably would have just raised a fit. Oh, yeah. So it's probably good that he got the dogs. I love that investor mindset. You're like, nope, we're gonna find a way to make a dollar out of this. Yeah, I'm sure that ten or oh, ten grand. Like, oh, for, for sure. sure. Oh, you're getting out of the hole there. Like, yeah, you're, you're just scrounging. That's, yeah, yep, that's a opportunity to break even. So you may have touched on this, but what got you into flipping? Because you've been doing this for what twenty years now. The second career. What was the first? Right out of college, I was just working at a trucking company. Okay. I, I thought I was going to be like this big corporate CEO. Like I always thought like I'd want to be that guy. And then that was when the times were good. But I realized in the corporate world, when, when things suck or the economy sucks, like it's very shit rolls downhill. And, and I never liked that. I had some awesome bosses in the corporate world, but I had some real big idiots. It's like, man, how did you make it this far in life? Now, part of that was my uh, thinking I knew everything at, at 21 years old. But then there was the other part that they really were stupid. So now, even in hindsight, but... Uh, I realized I'm like, if I want to control my destiny, like I, I got to go do something else. I didn't start in flipping. I got my real estate license. I bought my, actually I got, I bought my first place, screwed up the first flip big time, everything. Um, had it evict first tenant. It wasn't a flip. It was supposed to be a hold. But then I'm like, you know, I'm just going to sell these problems to other people. And I was doing really good as a real estate agent, like part time. Like I was making more there than I, I made like 130,000, like the first year, like part time. What year was that? 2003 three okay. mm, no crap. and uh, it, anybody you can line up anyone that had a pulse get a mortgage back then it's like oh, listen, yeah. i'm gonna find a way for you to buy a property and we're gonna sell it six months from now and you're gonna make 25 mm -hmm. grand and uh you know it's already got a ten in it whatever uh, it, and i'll get you the mortgage here's my guy just sign this paperwork and i made a lot of people out of money that way horrible horrible business model i remember talking to sophisticated real estate or investors and like that's the stupidest fucking idea i've ever heard and I'd walk away thinking, I, I was, the, I think dude, that guy doesn't know what he's doing. I don't know how he's gotten that far. So, but uh, I was the, the idiot, like just trying to like scam the, the current market. Kind of work with what you got. 
but we we were uh, just really selling properties. And that's really how we got into the property mm -hmm. management space is we kept selling to all these investors. Managing properties really started as a means to that. And I didn't want to manage properties because I knew how bad I did on my one property. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. And uh, it was also my attorney who we sold an investment property to. He was legit. He put 20% down and all that stuff. But, oh, uh, he did a real mortgage. Yeah, he did a real mortgage. Oh. And uh, he, uh, we're at Chicago Title, Arlington Heights. And he said, uh, Mark, I need you to manage this for me. No, Paul, like, you know, I'm hor you just helped me get out of this stupid hole I did a year ago. He's like, yeah, you made all those mistakes on your, your dollar. So yeah, Paul, but I don't even know what to charge you. He's like, I'll pay you 50 bucks a month to just manage this place. I, I don't want to deal with that. I'm an attorney. I said, but Paul, you, yeah, you're right. You're an attorney. You're going to want like a contract. Like, I, I don't have a contract. He's like, I'll draft something up and you could uh, just sign it. You, you can uh, use it for other clients as well. And uh, we took that on and he just sold that condo last year. And we charged him $50 like ever since. And we still use a modified version of that same management agreement. So, nice. But that's how we got a property management. It was still a means to an end. It was like, all right, this covers you know some of the overhead. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when the market crashed, we the property management kind of took off because just that's all we're working with is investors. And then we started buying a lot of stuff. But I, I was never a big fan of flipping just because it's mostly because I blew that money before I knew anything productive to do with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of those. You know, it, it was like, all Don't right, I got 30 grand. Which, I'll, I'll go do this. I'll do that. And then I still have seven grand left for my next down payment. It's like, Jeez. It's, it's, so it's, I, I got into that more of that buy hold mentality um, a, a lot earlier just because I couldn't do anything constructive with it. So it's kind of a forced savings when you, when you buy and hold. Well, yeah. So what about you, Tom? Uh, 15 years ago, 10 years, I bought a town home in Plainfield because I was working down there. Mm hmm and it was cheaper to buy one down there than it was to get a new car, basically, because they were going for like the prices of cars back then. Um, and I had people who also wanted to go to Chicago, and we were, like, we were acting like consultants. Thursday night, we'd take off the weekend, go party, come back down Sunday, go to work Monday to Thursday type of thing. And so I had these guys living with me. I was like, oh, well, this is pretty good. Like, I don't have to pay for any of this. Like, mm -hmm. this is, there's something here. Then you know, I, I started doing decently well in the corporate world. Forget about real estate. I sit out the best time to buy. I sit out the... 2010 to 2014 or whatever mm -hmm. um which is obviously in hindsight terrible but then i started working with blake mccray a mutual friend of ours who i also knew he was doing flips and he was looking for investors so i was being his money guy so i'd, I'd lend him something he'd give me a return and i was just passively doing this and then we started sharing profits and on a few of those profits were really big i was like this guy's dumber than me and like like there's a lot of money like well there's something here and so that's when i like really wanted to put the foot on the gas and say, all right, hey, like there's something here. Like let's let's start getting involved. And that's when I started going pretty heavy. Um, started on the south side, had a 30, 40 units down there that Mark managed uh, and then migrated up to the north side now. So that's where I predominantly focus. I still have him in my phone as South Suburb Linwood Tom Shellcross. Because that's when I was selling property management services, that's how I remembered who was who when they called me back. So a single family home down in Linwood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So is that how you met? You never bought it though. No, they they you hired they, me they and then you backed out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, that's how that's how we met. He was managing your properties. Yeah, oh. yeah. Blake introduced us. Yeah. Nice. So you still you you still own several? I own on the north side now. Okay. Oh, you got rid of the ones on the south side. Yeah, we have we got one still down there for sentimental value, but. Sentiment. <laughs> and then you primarily flip. Yeah. So Chris Clancy is my general contractor, but I consider my partner and. We just, anything on the north side, if it's two units or more, we'll hold it. And if it's a two unit that we would deconvert to single family or a single family to start with, we'll flip it. So it's like the two, the disposition just kind of depends on you the got, asset. You got any flip stories for us? Yeah. No, they're those, dude, like everyone's like, oh, I'm just going to flip. Flipping sucks. Like it, it's tough. It's like, it's, it's a job and it's capital intensive. It's labor intensive. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with just crazy that you're dealing with contractors, you're dealing with buyers, you're dealing with the city. Like it, it's, it's not awesome. Um, I'm trying to think of the craziest thing. The coolest thing we found, we, we find a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Coolest thing we found was one of those little pistols, like the ladies used to carry in their purse, you know, hundred years ago. Oh, like the little tiny ones. Yeah. Buried in the wall. So like someone, it was definitely, it was hidden. It definitely killed someone, right? Yeah, like it, it's, it was, it was yeah. hidden in the wall <laughs> for a reason. Like it's found out like, Oh, cool. Did you take it like pawn stars or something? No, we called the 16th district and just said like, hey, like we got like a murder weapon from like 100 years ago. And they're like, yeah, we don't want the paperwork tossed there. Like, thing. we don't care. Yeah, like, this is like, like, like is it this, this no, goes against our away. clearance rate. Like, we're, we're out. I love that you called that <laughs> in. I'd have been like, cool. <laughs> mm -mm, just probably a serial number, fingerprints. No, that murdered some random crime boss. Northside? Yeah, that murdered a crime boss. 
Absolutely. So what's the hardest part about flipping? Right now, inventory is tough. Just putting everything together, it's tough. Like you get yeah. dealing with the city's tough. Um, they're, they're not quick. They're not, they, they don't care about your business. They don't care about your plan. Like, I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just they're giant bureaucracy and they don't care about my little deal. Um, you have to have, it's very capital intensive. You say, hey, there's hard money lenders, there's private money. That's all great. You still got to pay them. Mm -hmm. You go over, you're still paying for that. Mm -hmm. You know, you run hot, like that's that's on you. Like it's coming out of your wallet. And if you do it as a business, you're not doing one at a time. You're doing multiples. And, you know, you, you can get pinched this way, that way. And all of a sudden you're sitting there going, wow, this is a lot of capital on the table. Um, an actual rehab, and I'm, I'm lucky to have Chris, like we do giant rehabs. I don't think we've done anything under 400K in a long time. You know, our rehabs right now are... 700k 800k 500k 450k like these are big job. big guts mm -hmm. yeah and like the bigger you do the the more risk there is mm. well more power to you i couldn't i know you are a seasoned flipper yourself now i've done three there you so go I wouldn't, I've done that is that is it's three more than a lot of people <laughs> yeah i haven't done any so i am not seasoned one of the best things though you have it and i had it too is having a partner that's a gc or a project manager mm -hmm. i think yeah, you could probably speak to it like the the intensity or the time, the mindset to to dive in and out of what you're doing and project manage is tough. And yeah. you know, we we still did hundreds of flips over the years, and uh, I couldn't have done it without my partner, uh, Brian. So, yeah, absolutely. Like it, it would be hands off. Like that's the biggest, that's the biggest like asset. Like you have your network or whatever. That's the one where he gets hit by a train. It's like all right, we got to change the business. Model. Yeah, yeah. Maybe <laughs> maybe we don't flip. Maybe we start holding. Yeah. <laughs> So where in the flip, I guess this is for all three of you, where in the flip do you start listing the property? Like when do you know that, okay, I need to get this sold? We, in this market, if we're drywalled, we're going to soft sell this thing, right? You're at 1.5 or higher, like people are dying for that product mm -hmm. right now. And you kind of open the door up a little bit because then they're going to want, pick out tile, pick out finish. Right. Like you Upgrades. open yourself up to a little bit, but you also, you can kind of feel them out. Like, all right, well, if they're going to pay this price, like... Mm -hmm. We'll do this dance with them. Um, so we, we right now, like we do it really, really early. We've always played under five hundred, uh, under half a million, and we've always waited. I'm not doing anything right now, but I, and when we were doing stuff, it was I wanted the place to be 100 percent finished uh, before we go live and have all the pictures and so forth. So I agree with that too. Like the bungalows, yeah. like I, I don't pre-sell. Like it's yeah. a different, different client. Yeah, and that's where I'm at too. I'm on, like under the 400 mark so and also the real estate agent in me is like everything must be perfect and photos I, and yeah staged, my, i think that's, you know? that's that's where i fall and it's too. done well for us for, you know to have that everything buttoned up before we go live i i ran into too many issues that you guys are probably good at this now but there's a lot of facilitation and expectations and and management of emotions around walking in and a pr product that's 75 80 percent finished and then the things that they can assume and then the things that, oh, they, crazy. that, that are misinterpreted. A... You might say something and then be like, oh, I, I thought the tile was going to be totally beige to me is not beige to you. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. So like th that's, I, I got a lot of, shoot out a lot of props to you if you guys are able to kind of pre-sell them because there's a lot of management of uh, just people I mean, expectations. Yeah. It's almost like new construction, right? You need all yeah. the specs and like. Yeah, you have the spec book and we almost lay it out to see, like feel them out a little bit. We'll say, this is the price and we're going to finish this as if we're not under contract. We're just going to do this in cool like buy the house or like if you're going to be involved like we got to adjust some things here yeah, yeah so you're making a little extra money possibly for dealing with what i just explained then correct like okay. we will indirectly charge them for the hassle of doing it and then also like people start customizing this you can back out of any deal in illinois it's buyer friendly it's i mean it's insane. yeah do you have so, their earnest money go hard well if they any customization so they want like a custom like a uh, good example they they want the mud room they want some custom built-ins cool like or whatever they want to paint some weird color yeah, yeah they want to paint the cabinets like well, all right well if you back out like i'm gonna have to repaint them yeah. so like you're hard here like this yep. is five g's that you're not getting back if you walk from this deal totally so earnest money hard that means they don't get it back correct cool if they back out which protects the builder or rehabber because now like he said if they decide to paint the cabinets orange they're probably one in a million that want an orange cabinet mm. so it covers them to have the ability to change it back or yeah if they're not willing to put down some money for that and they want something crazy it's like all right, it's, it's one or the other right yeah. like you gotta you gotta are you close like are you gonna go through with this or no so hmm. it, help, it helps fill them out a little too 
What's the craziest design someone's ever picked? It was an orange cabinet. <laughs> no, we haven't <laughs> had orange cabinets. We've had we've had one where it's a really cool historic home, and they just wanted everything white and sterile. Oh, like it was just like so disappointing. Like, and we and we do like if you look at the stuff we do like. I go and buy stained glass for like almost every project. Like we, we pride ourselves on like all this historic and we spend way too much money doing this, but like we both thoroughly enjoy it. And like, say we went under contract early. It was just like, they wanted the most bland new construction. Like just, you know, every single new construction home you see. And in oh. the house was not, the house was had all this cool charm. I was like, all right, like, Shoot. thanks for the check. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for buying it, I guess. Now, in older buildings like that, do you have to check to see if there's things you can't do to the outside? What do you mean? Like, I'm just thinking about, like, historic properties. Aren't there things that you cannot do? Correct. I haven't had anything. Like, the, there's, like, the orange district or whatever they call it out by Lincoln Park. Um, or, like, uh, I know it's also in, like, Wicker Park. I haven't had anything that's been, quote, unquote, historic. Okay. I've signed, I've signed affidavits that, I w- like, I won't tear the house down. Like, I've done, people have, like, been really concerned. We have one now. It's a cool old Victorian home. Um, I signed off. Like, I'm not going to tear it. Like, I, it was a covenant. I had to sign at closing. I'm not tearing yeah. this thing down. Wow. Is that what the seller with the town? That's one of the reasons That's one of the reasons we got the deal over, like, new construction guy. Like, she lived there for X amount of years, and she didn't want it to go. Was that on the title? I signed at closing, so I'm assuming it's on title. Wow. That's wow. cool. You don't hear about that that often in real life. Hmm. I mean, I've helped clients win multiple offers before by just simply saying something of like they don't want to change anything about the house. Yeah, we love your house that you've had yes. for 50 years. Yes. That's I recently leverage. had yeah. clients win out of like 15 offers. They were 20000 under the highest offer just because they didn't want to change anything. And it's it been in the seller's family for 50 years or something the kid grew up in the house and like that meant more to them than all these people coming in of like yeah paint this change this rip this wall down there's power in that and it's cool i love vintage historic buildings i hate old stuff (laughs) get out i do so then mark you are more on the hold side we've so we did between 08 and 18, we did 482 kind of burr strategy holds. Mm, okay. But about halfway through, we were like, we were running out of money for the down payment for the burr. We're like, yeah, maybe we sell one or two of these. We'll sell a turnkey, right? And that was kind of when the whole turnkey thing was starting to come up on Bigger Pockets 2015. And uh, first guy came along, he's like, I'll buy 27 of them. <laughs> So oh, we're like, wow. wow, like you get that check and that's where you're like, oh, you're already spending it. Like I was talking about yeah. before. So, and uh, so we end up, we're like, maybe we have a turnkey business here. And uh, so we started selling, but we'd sell these turnkey to out-of-state investors and we would, we knew we had a good product. We knew there's some other turnkey companies in Chicago that, that weren't doing anything as nice as we were, as quality as we were. So we kept the management of that as well too, after we sold it. But uh, we did that for a while. And then uh, we eventually... You know, we only have a few properties left on the south side, but we sold a lot of that and we got a lot into industrial real estate. So more of these oh. smaller multi-unit properties in the city outside of Cook County, um, the 60s built ones. So we, we bought a bunch of those. And then uh, recently I've gotten back into just buying these kind of class A single family, 250, 350, uh, small, seven, 800 square foot single family homes in the suburbs. So where do you, what suburbs or just any in particular? I like, I'm a big fan of just DuPage County in general, uh, hmm. but you know, like we're working on one right now in Downers Grove and we got another one under contract in Bartlett. So we, um, talked about professional tenants on another episode. <laughs> you have any uh, experience? In- we have coming up, uh, hopefully on the podcast, uh, that guy out of California. Did you see that email? Yesterday? Yeah. Um, there's a guy in California that's a, like, he's all about coming in and Moving in with the the tenant that the squat it is more of a squatter thing. I think I saw this. Was it like an Airbnb guest who yeah, moved yeah, in he, and stayed? Yep. So this guy he, he'll come around for like uh, for it's usually about five thousand dollars plus expenses and just like he'll travel out and and move uh, in with the people and get them to move out. Like it's kind of crazy. Oh, squatter. Oh, he'll move different. in with the squatter. Yeah, yeah. He's got a whole thing. I can't think of his name uh, offhand, but he, we got him pegged to come on the the podcast. But oh, that's awesome. Yeah, professional tenants. That, that's uh, I think professional tenants and squatters are a big problem here, especially here in the city. In our tenant friendly state. In our tenant friendly state, and our the police don't want to do anything, and they it's a civil matter. You got to do something else. So you, you, it sucks because you're forced to either do something drastic in your own hands, and, and there's different things you could do. Or you have to sit there and wait it out, and yeah, that sucks. Hmm. Can you disclose? Can you disclose some of the things <laughs> that one could do 
off the record, of course, if they have a squatter professional tenant that they need out. Well, I've been advised, and I've also talked to some other people that this is just their strategy. If they have a squatter and they just literally wait for them to leave go and go in there and lock the door and they bring some security and, and they just kick them out. Um, I think there's two different stories when it comes to squatters. There's the, I have a lease and, and, you, and then there's the people that I just moved in. Right. Uh, the, that story works better for the, the latter. Yeah. Uh, because usually there's no leverage then whatsoever. Sure. But uh, at the same time, I've seen it done on both fronts. So, um, Oh, yeah. Tenants not paying rent is awful. Yes. There's a, there's the other big problem that's out there right now is more the fake tenants where you could go online right now for like 700 bucks. There's so many of them now. It's ridiculous. And buy a whole identity. I, I can, I, I could, I could be whoever I am, but I could buy an entire identity that includes an ID with uh, that, re that real person's face, their whole backstory and they submit an application. And it's one of those moments where us as landlords say, wow, this is a slam dunk. <laughs> 800 credit score, 350,000 income. Wow, they even showed their savings account. It, it's got $440,000 in it, like slam dunk. Um, I've and, never heard of this, have you? No. I've heard of the other end of it, of like the landlord scam where you, tenants are finding something on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or whatever, and the landlord it's like, yeah, come see it. Somehow they find a way in, or maybe not. They just say, yeah, you can apply now $300 or 500 or something. And then they're signing leases and, and then they just disappear. Yeah, but this, uh, this other problem is uh, you don't even know who was, you approve them. And the problem is they're aggressive. They're like, hey, I got, uh, um, yeah, I submit everything. I really need to move by next week. You know, you sure, sure. It. Mm -hmm. It's like, I got a hair credit score. What, what will you, what's your thing about? Like, and, and they're yeah. really aggressive. Mm. And uh, it ends up being a lot of like kind of common sense things that end up being like the red flags of like, all right. So, but when you look up these people on LinkedIn, it's like, all right, you, you, your ID, uh, um, you're a Hispanic person. I met you out there and your ID is uh, a, a white woman in Michigan. Like it's a, <laughs> when you start really digging in, but no one really digs in that far. And, and that's the, the shame of it. Their bank statements are, are fraudulent. And there's different things like we use a service now that you could, you could scan and see for fraudulent documents. And it's crazy. Oh. You see two Bank of America statements right now. I show they're fake and a real. The blind eye, none of us would be able to tell. For sure. Mm. But this, this, there's different kind the of... Alignment, ink color. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Spacing. Yeah. And the funny thing that the we... The pay stubs too. The pay stubs don't... They're wrong a lot too. Yeah, they don't add up. Or yes, like, the math is wrong. I had one deductions was spelled wrong. Yes. No. Like it looked all legit. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's not how you spell deduction. But no one's looking at that. All no. They're blinded by 800 yes. credit score. Want to move in next week. A lot of times it's on a unit that they've been had on the market for a few weeks already. And they're like, man, they're itching. And like I need to get it rented. Yes. Yeah. So it's... Uh, and they'll target ones that are maybe a little overpriced. So uh, they know there's not a whole bunch of competition. So we... Uh, we, we catch probably one a month now, but it's like almost like they know. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. So it's, it's I can only imagine like what, what's out there. Our leasing manager, she's like, um, she loves catching them. And like she goes and finds the real person, gives them everything. And then says, calls up the person and says, I just told on you, you better watch it. Like she, she really gets a lot of enjoyment out of like I would calling them out and finding the right person. Playing detective is fun. But it ends up being, yeah, a lot of those, like, they put on their, their statement on the application and moving closer to work. But they're moving from Northbrook to Aurora, but their job's in, like, UIC. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, like, I, I don't know so how. It's like the subtle. Like, it's not really closer to work. Yeah, it's just, it's just something you glance over, like. And yeah. So. I guess when you're doing that much volume. It's easy to glance over. It's it's really easy. You get blinded. The too good to be well, true thing. Or just an, a newer, unexperienced landlord who's just, you know, has a few and is just like, oh, yeah, it looks good. I'd probably fall for it from being honest. Like, I never would have even thought to look for that kind I of stuff. I try to look at Last year, we inherited a tenant <clears throat> in Palatine. And uh, the guy hired us basically just to get this person out of there. So we took over, got the person out of there. And then... I got a call about four months later from another landlord, I think in your, your neighborhood uh, in Jefferson Park, saying, you know, they actually tried to hire us and they decided to do it on their own. And they went and did their own and they put that same tenant that was in Palatine in there. No. Because I said, send me over the application. And the name looked familiar. And I looked at it, I'm like, oh, I know everything about this guy. And, and uh, But they still had to go another four months and get that person out of there. So that person, like, it's, they got evicted and then they just went and did it again. Just but you don't even know who's living in your place then at that point. That's true because their identity is not real. They could be anybody. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is what's your advice then to someone who's should like look at this or? I, I think it has to be common sense. The other common red of... flag is 
one person moving into like a five bedroom house. Yeah. Mm, it's yeah. like, all right, come on. Why would you do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have no kids. Like, like, so there's these different red flags. I'd, I'd say credits, a lot of times, the, the few I've seen, the credit score has been pulled like a hundred times. Like they got mm. the identity and they've gone hog wild. Mm. So all of a sudden, like- they You can see all the inquiries. Yeah, yeah, there's there's 40 inquiries in the last two weeks on an 800 credits. Like that shouldn't be happening. Right. Like, why does this guy just open a bunch of department store cards? Stealing someone's identity. And then they just move in and, and don't pay or kind of what's their end game? So there's two versions of that person. There's a person that moves right away and just stops paying. Um, you know, maybe they come up with enough funds to move in and it's certified and they stop. Then there's the other person that buys that identity for 700 bucks because they know they can't get approved any other way. Mm. And they try. They might make they might make first four or five months payments. Mm -hmm. Month six, something happens in their life. And eventually they'll break down. And some of those, uh, we had a couple of those uh, early on that uh, we didn't realize seven, eight months down the road that we, we had a problem because they were paying. They moved yeah, in, they sure. paid. Mm -hmm. And uh, so th those are kind of the two different scenarios that, that happen. I mean, of course, you'd rather have the latter. It's someone that's trying for whatever reason they couldn't do it before themselves. And then they stop paying you. Wow. See, being a landlord's hard. In Illinois, being a landlord is hard. It's rewarding, can be, but it's hard. Have you, have you read the book, uh, uh, what's it, Evicted? No. No. Uh, you've read it, have you? Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a case study of four investors in Milwaukee. Really? And it, they, like, it's like you give the, it's like a three-day notice, and like you could be in front of the judge in like a week. Like, totally. It's, oh. New Mexico is kind of the same way. Yeah, which I was, is I was actually I'm in New from. Mexico uh, last weekend, and we were talking about oh, that as well. Where in New Mexico? Um, Albuquerque. Okay, that's where I'm from. Oh, really? And I have a couple of properties there. I climbed La Luz, the mountain, oh, yeah. uh, on Saturday, so... Okay, so Evicted. Yeah, a great book. It's been out for a few years. Uh, I'm going to okay. write it down. Jamie book, we should I'll uh, link it link in the it. show. Thank you. <laughs> I actually have, he has a new book out too, Poverty in America. Um, oh. Poverty by America. So Poverty by. I was, I was going to check that out. Have you read it? No, no, it's in the, the two listen to list. Okay. okay. Okay, so Evicted is a good audio book. Okay, great, because yeah. I, I don't read anymore. I can't either. I can't, I physically can't do it anymore. Now I... I, it, put, it puts me to sleep immediately. As yeah. soon as I start reading five minutes in, I'm just, I'm out. Yep. But audiobooks, I pound through about one a week. It's easy. Love. We had an author on the podcast a couple weeks ago, Brian Tibbs. He has this book, uh, Hacker. And uh, I was listening to that today. He, <laughs> first thing I said to him when I talked to him, I said, uh, you're a jerk for not having this audiobook. You made me read this book. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we came in hot on that guy. Yeah, yeah. I was so bad. Like, and we're like, hey, a couple things here, buddy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd yeah. be pissed. <laughs> Could you do this better, please? Great Listen book. It. Great guy. Thanks great book. Podcast, Smart now. investor. But uh, yeah. He, he needs to make an audio book. Yeah, we got to get him an audio book. So. Audio book. That's so funny. What's that one about? It's really about uh, being conservative and kind of hacking your different, hacking your way to kind of financial freedom. So, oh. But he's, uh, um, he was, uh, his book kind of took him all the way. He lived like on $47,000 a year. And like, I mean, he's got millions of dollars of real estate now. Like he's done pretty good for himself. But he's kind of, he's on the same page with his wife. Had a plan, very conservative, raising his kids the same way. And, uh, you know, very pay it forward type uh, guy that's yeah. done a lot of cool things. Local to Chicago? Um, no, he's out of, uh, I believe, Boise, Idaho. So, Oh, geez. Well, do either of you have any other stories or anything you want to share? You know, share the or? only time I used barbed wire, like <laughs> going back to that, because I was, remember those Pullman Row homes? We had a one on the 106 block of Langley, and they broke in through the side. Like the brick. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they got in, like we secured everything. We had the dogs up. They, the, you know, these hundred year old home, they went a sledgehammer or whatever. And they, they went, went through the brick. They, they went, went through, through the, the neighbor, like the row home. Wow. Oh, they inside went, of the other. Yes. Oh, That's geez. like a heist. <laughs> yes. That is like a heist. <laughs> yeah. I've had people go through, I've had the, everything boarded up, secured, and they go through the frame, side of a frame house. Jeez. I, no, I show up the next is... day and it's just like a big hole in the side of the uh, frame. <laughs> they cartoon the guy. Yeah. Just perfectly. <laughs> Perfectly cut. What are they? Go what are they taking? Like appliances? Like eighty dollars in copper? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. I just leave a note. Like I will send you two hundred dollars and just leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Dude, like if you, I will give you the keys. Just take the kind. Don't for, through the walls. Oh, I'd be pissed. Well, one thing we used to do when we used to rehab places was, especially around multi units, is we never locked the interior doors. Because if they're gonna break in, I'd rather them not kick those doors. Yeah, oh, there you go. Damn, okay. so yeah. That, that was something that that was like a little hack that we started doing. That makes sense because I've shown a lot of vacant multi units and all the doors. If you made it this far, just you, go. you deserve to go in and take <laughs> yeah. whatever you want. Leave the doors alone. I, um, we had a guy. G give them like arrows to like where stuff is so they don't 
get it all dirty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Copper's down here. Like, just Abuse. no need to go up here. Like, just lay, lay the plastic in the. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because you'd see the damage they do before they find the actual copper in the wall. Like, it's like, man, you weren't even close. This, how could you have thought that was the pipe, the plumbing mm. wall? Like, so clearly what, you don't know fun, anything about construction. Funny story on my own on my own house. Um, we we're we we're building. We bought our neighbor's house, and that became our new house. So we moved one house over. During that time, I'm working out in the garage because it's just a complete disaster over there, like in the summer. And my cousin went to the army, gave me a squat rack. And these guys came in middle of the night, probably because I had a permit pulled, right? They're looking for copper. They see metal out there. They steal all the weights. They steal everything. They tried taking the squat rack through the service door. I didn't even have a garage door. It's new. Mm-hmm. So they could have just, like, there was no garage door. They could have just walked right out. <laughs> these guys are trying to get through the service door. Couldn't do it and panicked and left. And they didn't take your squat rack, though? No. And then I had no weights for it, but... What? You know what? Let's take the I, I, well, I literally here. walked in and hit it. Like, I opened the service door and... It was right there. <laughs> and you were like, guys, there's big-ass opening right there. Yeah, like, I... <laughs> it's like, you want to talk to him. Like, come on, man. Like, really? Like, <laughs> like, like what? Yeah, what were you yeah, possibly like, I, I, Oh, I got a dead guy story <laughs> for you. Finally. <laughs> I didn't see it, though. I do have, I, I'll tell the dead guy story after you, then. Oh, okay, all right. Let's all right. go. We had a house at 4720 South Wabash, a three flat that we um, just finished up. And uh, they tried stealing the power from the weather head to the electric pole. That copper oh, man. got fried. Oh. And died. So that, that was... Uh, like up by the transformer? You, like, so you know the weather head that goes up, you, you get your, your meter in the back and it goes straight up. And then that connects like that. Yes, yes, yes. That, yes. that pole, you got the... I think we put three phase in there, so you got the three uh, things coming in there. It's pretty heavy. It was three unit. We thought we were beating the system back then, not having gas, so everything was uh, electric. And uh, yeah, he, he he didn't. Uh, he didn't make it. He tried stealing it, but again, think about that. That was probably three hundred dollars worth of copper he would have got, and the guy lost his life over it. That. What wild. was the paperwork like on that one? I, we didn't have to do any paperwork again. I'm not even sure the police came. We, I don't think we probably filed a police report. We never filed an insurance claim either on that. But uh, You just show up and there was like a fry. Combat came in and actually fixed that for us. Um, well, they pick up the body too? Like, guys, no, not that, part, just... not that part. No, but, uh, Who found it, them? I think it was a tenant that called. Uh, like our power's out. They look outside. And there's a body. That oh. was what originally happened. I think the tenant called in uh, for the power. And then uh, we told them, it's, his power's in your name, call ComEd. And then ComEd sent somebody out. And I think it was ComEd that ultimately wow. found them. So. Wait, did, so this was, you were managing this one at the time? Yeah, yeah. We owned something we owned, yeah. Ooh. Now, the funny thing is my business partner is like, his only thought was like, they're so stupid. I would never go, like, he's afraid of heights. He's like, I wouldn't go three stories for 300 bucks, let alone play with electricity. <laughs> it is. So we found out several weeks ago that you can bury a body in your backyard in the state of Illinois. Yeah. But there's a limit. You can only bury so many bodies. I think that's how that rule is. Oh, really? really? I think there's a max, like a ceiling. I don't know how I know that. But How, I, I, how am I the only guy who doesn't know this? Like, <laughs> Well, we talked to an attorney. <laughs> And we found this out. No, you she... just were curious because you apparently encounter all these dead bodies. And... How'd that conversation come up with you and the attorney? I don't know. How did it this come our, up? It was the fact of the day. Was it the fact of the day? It was the it, fact. It of was the day. not. It was with Jackie Kelly episode two, and then we asked oh, Melissa that's right. about it, but she didn't know about it. Okay, and then you have a dead body story. My, mine's just no. about being seasoned. Uh, you know, Mark's been at this for a long time. So this is like two, three years ago. I work with uh, Jeff Weinberg over at Drexel Properties, and that's we buy you know bigger units, bigger buildings, and uh, you know, we get a call from the neighbor, like a smell, go up there, died, not like fried or anything cool, just guy the died, yeah. Old guy, like older fella? 60s, probably too young, but yeah. Hmm. So I'm like, what the, f-? like I am just, you know, f- trying to keep cool, calm, and collective. First thing he does, like the fifth of the month, first thing he goes, all right, he paid his rent, we'll get this thing cleaned up, call this number, we'll be, be ready to go by the first. Like just, this guy has been through it 10 times before, right? Just, Damn. <laughs> That happened last uh, just had, just November exa- to us. Knew exactly who to call, like the company to call. Like just, I was just like, whoa. I mean, like, you know. I, I, and what if I he mean, hadn't paid his rent? <laughs> and you got to get him up It's just <laughs> Call his family. Like, uh, he hasn't paid May yet. Um, he stayed through the 5th. Oh, my God. We, we had a guy in Elk Grove this past December. It was like the 6th of the month. And that was, I knew our the client that, we don't own that property, but someone else. I knew this guy, and I knew that was the first question he was going to ask. So I went right away you and looked that up to see if the guy paid that month's rent. Because what happens, though, is in those scenarios, you end up, it takes a couple months to get the stuff out. And mm-hmm. I know that guy was tight on money and, and, and so forth. So um, yeah. Why does it take so long? Doesn't 
I should know this as a landlord, but doesn't death void a lease? Yeah, but you got the it family. doesn't void you're all their gonna... stuff. Yeah, like you're not going to put all the... And there was a fifth story. Like, where are you going to put that stuff in that, like in the hallway? Like, then you have an HOA issue. Like, Jesus, I suppose you have to look at the lease, look at the rel- con- relative contact, call them. Hey, you know, your tenant died. They're paid through the end of the month. I got another. <laughs> you, uh, I got a little bit more heart than you over there, man. I, it's, look, I'm sorry. Well, I know. I'm Catholic imagining. Upbringing. I'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Mine was always a PS. Like, just, just a note, side note. I got another one more. I know you guys want to probably wrap here. but uh, Oh, no. I'm enjoying hearing about dead bodies. South Chicago, we had a two flat. And a lady in the unit one supposedly murdered. They found her dead. Um, she was murdered. <laughs> it's not supposedly. like, And... It was the neighbor upstairs that called the police. They came, they took the body. Again, we were never questioned, nothing like that. Like it just was taken away. But the problem I ran into was the family, I'm pretty sure it was the son, if I remember correctly, put signs everywhere in the neighborhood saying on every pole. Like if you stood at like the end of the block, you see a sign at every pole. 8715 South Marquette, Unit 1. It had the exact address. And, oh. And it, it was horrible because like, you're never going to rent the place. Yeah. Was he, I mean, were the pictures like, if you have any information about my yes. mom's murder? Yeah. The guy was doing probably something I might even do too. You know what I mean? But he put the full address on there. Like, and then out of respect, I'm just like, man, all right, uh, I'll, I'll wait this out a, a month. And then a month goes by and I, I take him, I take him down. I send someone down there. He takes him down. I give a guy 50 bucks, takes him all down. And then uh, like two days later, they're all back. They're all I send back. leasing back out there to like, all right, we're good. Let's, let's, let's go. We're, in the meantime, we clean up the unit and so forth. And, uh, he put everything back. So I called the guy. I'm like, hey, man, this is an awkward conversation, dude. But this is my problem. Yeah. And yeah. this is what I'm willing to do. So I, he basically, I said, I'm sure your, your, your service costs this much money. I'll, I'll give you a couple grand uh, to cover some of those costs. But you got to take the signs down, man. Like, this is, I got to get some money coming in here. So he took the money and, and uh, we ended up getting the place rented out shortly after. But the first thing the unit two says to the, the tenant the day she moves in is like, man, I can't believe you're going to live there when something got paid. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, my God. So it starts the next round of problems. So you had to turn over that unit. And then before we re-rented again, we got rid of the person upstairs. And, Get rid of uh, yeah, the cl- like, Clear out the yeah, entire building. Yeah, yeah. No so, history. Was there a resolution? Did we find the murderer? No, I don't think so. No. Okay. Uh, all right. And why didn't you just go... Yeah, I guess I'm an asshole. On every sign that he put up, just put up a for rent ah. sign right over top of it. No one would ever know. I'm sure I made a joke like that uh, uh, along the way internally somewhere. Well, if he wouldn't put them back up, you know for sure it's going to say for rent. He's going to put another one right yeah. under it. Oh, I'm petty. I'd go back and forth. <laughs> well, Fun. you have way too and much. And 87 you have a one inch thick, uh, <laughs> exactly, one inch thick sign like, oh, what's behind this? I mean. I called the alderman even. I talked to him and he's like, hey, man, you just got to let him grieve. I have to pay a mortgage here, dude. Oh, this is what happened. The alderman called me because our lawn was long. And then I ended up talking to the alderman, uh, is alderman Mitchell. And, uh, and I said, dude, you, you got, you got, I know you guys got resources for this stuff. You got, you got to help me. Like he gave me some advice. He said, he'll call. I bet you never called. But, uh, uh, but ultimately that was, uh, that was it. So, it, but that was, uh, after you got rid of the tenant, you got rid of the next tenant. And, like, I mean, that was a two and a half year problem oh my that, God. that just doesn't, does not cash flow. No. So you guys are hard to underwrite with that. Much yeah. more seasoned of landlords than I am, but I'm just hoping that I'd never run into a <clears throat> red table. Here we go. A dead body. Or a dead tenant. Dead anything. While they're living. I had a tenant that died shortly after he moved out. I was sad for him. He met, moved around the corner and I saw his wife walking through the neighborhood. I was like, Oh hey, how's your husband? She's like, Died. <laughs> and I said, Oh, are you okay? Oh yes, I'm fine. But I still I felt bad because it it's one of those, you know. You still get mail for them every once in a while. I'm just like, oh, he's he's no longer with us. Sad. We're still getting mail from him. The mail never ends. That's the, you know what? Do you guys ever run into that where you're just like eight years down the line and you're still getting mail from tenants that are long gone? Yeah. Either from the plane of living or just your unit. But I'll tell you, yes, I do. But that reminded me of another kind of tip. Whenever you have a tenant that moves out and they owe money, send them to the collections no matter what. You, there's a good chance you could get it someday. That's true. I just got there today for somebody from 2000 and like 15 or 16 or something like that. Like it was like $700. They were going to buy a house. Uh, but that's the second or third time that's happened in, you know, in, in the last couple of years. I've, I'm, I'm actually in agreement with you. I, I evicted a tenant in 2017 and, you know, went, went through the whole process, went to court, it took months, got her out, got the judgment. I'm still collecting. I mean, I haven't seen a check in years, but... She bought a house 
But since I still have the judgment against her, I got served as one of the people that she owed money because I had a first lien and they were trying to collect on the house she foreclosed. I'm like, how the hell did she get a house, first of all? Like, who approved this mortgage? I, it wasn't me. But I was on the I was on the summons. I didn't have to go. But they were like, so I called. I'm like, why am I on this? I don't know you guys. But no, no, you, she owes you money. She owes us money. But ours was a mortgage, so we get our money first. I'm like, why? So then I called my collection guy. He's like, yeah, they get their money first. But I'm still trying to collect from her. And it's been almost 10 years now. I'm like, dude. Wow. But oh, yeah. I'm, at this point, I don't really care if I get my money. I don't even want my money. I just don't want her to have my money. I'm very petty like this. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you got to let principles got to. Oh, yeah. I, I stand on principle. I just do not want her to have my Actually, money. Actually, I should do that. I had a tenant stop paying rent and then they called me and said i can't pay rent i'm gonna move out so that was like best case scenario but she still owes me go after the tenant i should do that i'm gonna do it well we'll uh okay wrap up yeah unless sir you you have more to no i'm done i'm done rambling okay. after you <laughs> amazing so um you guys asked your guests this question so i'm gonna take it back to you Ooh. what do you both do for fun besides squats did you say squats i did <laughs> I got a rack and no bar. <laughs> Side note to that, that ended up in our basement, and I had to not drywall between the rafters to do pull-ups. Nice. <laughs> See? And I, I have cut myself several times. You're tall, too. <laughs> Fitness no. takes precedent over, you know, nice rafters. Can I do what you're going to do? What do I do for fun? It's, it sucks when they turn the questions on you. Um, <laughs> it's, it's hard to get away from, like, the real estate side of things. I yeah. like, well, I like to listen to audiobooks. I really enjoy that. Um, I really enjoy history books as well, too, and when I'm listening to it. And then, you know, I've been in the last couple of years kind of in this health hacking and just learning different things, fitness, and uh, um, just different ways to maybe live longer or live healthier into that longer, that last decade of my life. So, awesome. Okay. Quick question with your audiobooks. What do you do while you listen? Because I walk. That's what I'm curious about. Anything what you do. and everything. I okay. Mean, I, it gets bad because I, I think we're in this day and age where it's, now it's like, all right, well, I'm walking from here to the basement. Oh, I've ever put the, the audiobook in, so I get two things at one time. But it's no, like, it, it's whatever. It, it's, it's laundry. It's, it's uh, mindless it, tasks. Yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, anything and everything. All right, I'm right there with you. Um, I'm still active. I, uh, I'm in two softball leagues. I play against Teddy Coleman on yeah, Monday. Yeah. Um, so Shout out, Ted. Yeah, it's a. Still do softball, still do basketball. I got the four kids. That keeps me busy. Um, I'm still into music, so I still like playing once in a while, but more, you know, my wife and I go see five, six concerts a year. So, What, uh, what genre of music? The cliche answer of everything, but like anything that sounds like, call it like, like a good 90s rock, like from grunge to like Foo Fighters, anything that sounds like that today. Fun fact, in. last Saturday, no, last Sunday, last weekend, I saw Stained. In there you concert go. in Milwaukee. <laughs> Coolest thing ever. I've never been to a rock concert. And you started with Stained. I've never even heard of Stained. <laughs> You've never heard of Stained? No. It's been a while. Been a while. <laughs> I'm on the outside. <laughs> I miss Q101. Yeah. Yeah. This is Man Cal at his finest right here. Oh, this Man Cal is... Radio. That was <laughs> Chicago. Was it? It was Chicago, right? Yeah, Q101. Yeah, and it was 103.5, then Q101. Years oh, ago. Oh, well, I wasn't I in Chicago. So. You weren't here, but. I was in an Alien Ant Farm music video. The movies, the movies. You told me that on Tuesday, so that's come up. Alien Ant Farm's come up twice in the last yeah, seventy-two yeah. You, you hours. You were in an Alien Ant Farm video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the movies video where he runs. He's Mr. Miyagi runs down the middle of the the movie theater. <laughs> were you a, were you a movie theater extra? Yeah, I was just an extra. Just... I was in a bunch of things as an extra. I lived in. L I moved to LA for a year. Oh, oh wait, can we can we link this music video in the show notes? Yeah, Is that I don't allowed? Know, I'm sure we can yeah. find it. Okay, it's Alien Ant Farm. Movies. All right, next question. Um, would you rather be invisible or fly? I'm going to disappoint you. Definitely fly here. Get my time back. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I would do fly also. <laughs> Dang it. I'm not a sneaky guy. Invisible doesn't do it for yeah. me. Yeah. It's not the sneak factor. <laughs> it's the anonymity factor. I, knew, I also knew you would say fly for time purposes. Mark takes caffeine pills instead of coffee because it's quicker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're one of those. He's one of those guys. So I knew he would say fly no matter For what. Sure. Oh like, my god, that's hilarious! <laughs> I think I'm, I'm on board. Between... I'm on board with you on this one. Yeah. Though. Yeah. I just haven't thought about the logistics nope, of flying. No, we all have. Nope, we're good. Whatever. I, you and Patrick. It was just okay? me and Patrick. Yeah, you're... fine. Um, and then lastly, what is one piece of advice you would give to yourself when you first started, knowing what you know now? 
I mean, I sat out 2010 to 2015. That's... Yo. <laughs> that was bad. Maybe don't do that. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Yeah. I think there's a couple of things. Um, probably the things that jump out first and foremost is on the business side, I would have hired more people faster versus doing things more. And then, to, so it'd be kind of investing back into the business faster. And then on the investment side, I would have invested less in C and D class stuff and more in A and B. Mm. Okay, interesting. You went after C and B or C and D because that's a lower price point. Yeah, but the crazy part was like Bridgeport and everything, and having to like you think about what what those prices were or suburbs. Um, mm -hmm. Like the time and effort I put into it uh, versus what I could have got um, in other areas w would have been uh, I don't know it been much different. Huh. Interesting. Good to know. All right. Well, other than the straight up Chicago Investor Podcast, where can our listeners find you? Or is that the best place? That's something to the site. I think that's good. Mark is trying to get on Instagram. He's oh, banned. Oh, oh, he's trying to get a handle. You follow us about 10 minutes before you got here. <laughs> oh, you're back I on. I read the instructions. Yep. There we go. I keep getting kicked off because I have Javier try helping me. He's in Mexico, so they, they like. They, oh. They keep, I got another guy that's trying to help me, like, like build a profile, and it's like, I, so I keep getting banned. But I was back on today. I followed you guys, followed the instructions, and we're good. All right. I I sent him same. instructions. Mark, Mark Ailey, I love it. R E I. Okay. I, I think I'm T Shell Cross seven two three. Wow. Just type in my name, you'll find it. We'll link it. We'll find it. <laughs> we will link this in the show notes. I really love doing that. I don't know if we can actually do all these things, but... We can. Okay, yes, cool. we certainly can. I love show notes. Amazing. Well, I'm just it. looking at the notes to see what books I need to listen to. Oh, I'll send them to you. It was relaxed and hacked. Yes. No, evicted. 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 Evicted, 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 and, evicted and relaxed are not the same. I don't, I don't know where I got relaxed that's, from. <laughs> that's evicted something else. and hacked. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening to another episode of Realty Chicago. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, this is episode 10. This so is. Wow. Double digits. Let's milestone. go. Double digits. So BJ you, Armstrong. I know. If you've been <laughs> listening this long, you like what you're hearing. So please like, subscribe, tell all of your friends. Share. Share. Find us on Instagram, YouTube, Reddit, TikTok. We have a Google form you can fill out if you'd like to share your stories anonymously. And all of those are Realty Chicago, R-E-A-L-T-E-A -E -E Chicago. And thank you both so, so, so much for being here. Really, thank you very much. This is our first uh, setup of four. Yeah. So this was fun too. Way to get it done, guys. All right, and first job. time where we didn't personally know a guest. So. That's true. <laughs> was, it, was it harder or easier? Um, easier. It's easier when you're, for me when I'm curious. Like, yeah. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I like to know all of the things, so I'm just going to ask all the questions. Yeah, and... so it's so much easier and more. Yeah, so that's how I am. We did it. Thanks, team. All right. Woo! Woo!